preach from the subject meaningless church meaningless church father may we do no damage to your word but preach that which becometh sound doctrine and holiness in Jesus name amen meaningless church I said uh, last Thursday night in the Bible study entitled Return to God. That the purpose of preaching, the purpose of the church, the purpose of Bible study, the purpose of learning the word is to change you, to change us. We don't attend church just for the sake of attending church. You don't preach for the sake of preaching. Uh, but it is, it is designed to affect you. We, we studied in the 8 a.m. class in, uh, today in Jeremiah chapter 25, where Jeremiah said to the people of Judah, I preached to you 23 years nonstop the same message. For 23 years telling you to repent. And he said repeatedly, you would not hearken. You would not hearken. Even if you heard me, you didn't respond to me. You would not hearken. 23 years. And he says, and also the Lord sent other prophets. He sent men like Zephaniah. He was a contemporary of uh, Jeremiah. And uh, the prophet Habakkuk was a contemporary of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah says, uh, preacher Uriah was a contemporary. He says, we preach to you and you would not hear. There are so many who hear the word, bless you my brother, who fail, who fail to Listen and respond to what God says. In Zechariah, the Lord challenged them to return to him. The challenge to God is to return to the Lord. That is to reverse our direction. When we are headed away, when we are going in the wrong direction, when we are following our own goals and aims and ambitions, if they lead us from him, he sends a word and he tells us to turn, as the King James says it, literally to return unto the Lord. Zechariah 1 and 3 says, Thus saith, therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. He said to the people, return to me. Come back to me, and I will come back to you. In fact, the motif, the theme of the entire book of Zechariah is the word return. The word return and turn is constantly mentioned and in the Lord telling the people to return to him. And he will in turn return to them. And trust me, you want the Lord to return to you. When the Lord looks our way, when God comes, moves in our direction, favor comes our way. Good things come your way. Blessings come your way when the Lord looks in your direction. You have an advantage in life when you have the favor of God on your life. Amen. And when the Lord says, I'll return to you, God, he deals even with uh, the weather. Uh, he, he deals with everything. Everything 
is in the Lord's hand. And when the Lord looks your way, we serve a God who is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you might have all sufficiency in all things and abound, the Bible says, to every good work. I am who I am and I am where I am solely because of the grace of God. I would be nothing without his grace, without his mercy, and without his favor. Amen. Every believer, every one of you, every one of us, if there's something in our life that God is not pleased with and you know the Lord is not pleased with it, give it up. Give it up. Even if the devil tells you that you can't live without it, Satan, he's lying to you. The truth is you can't live with it. You can't live with what the Lord says, give up. Missionary Taylor, it'll cut you short if you try to keep who and what the Lord says release. A friend of mine told me a story years ago, this is when I was a minister, of, uh, 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 of a young lady who wanted a particular car. And she just wanted this particular car. And the, the, the pastor uh, told her that, that, that that's not the car for you. And the pastor said, because she sought her pastor's uh, opinion, and the pastor said, that's not the car. He said, the Lord is saying, wait, don't get that car. But she had a heart set on that car. She wanted that car, and she got that car. And uh, the happiest day of her life after getting that car was the day when she finally got rid of that car. For the car was never anything but trouble. It was a uh, it was a curse. It, was, it wasn't good. It wasn't. She got the car, but she didn't get God's favor. See, even, I don't care if you buy a brand new car off the showroom floor. You need the Lord's favor to be able to enjoy the car. Come on, preacher. Don't you think that's a little much? If it's a brand new car, it should, it should function. Yeah, but the rest of the cars. You need God to keep the rest of the cars from running into you in your brand new car. Point is, you can't get anywhere without the favor of the Lord. And the Lord says, return to me. And in returning to me, the Lord says, I will return unto you. We also learn uh, Thursday night that the dynamic, efficacious, living word of the Lord judges our innermost being. That's probably why good preaching is resisted so. Very few preachers today are preaching the Bible. We're preaching f formulas, anecdotes, personal stories, uh, but very little scripture. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of, asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. That is, the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts. To discern your thoughts is to judge them. We're in a day where people say, don't judge me. Well, the word of God judges you. And the word of God doesn't just judge your actions. The word of God judges your thoughts. The Bible says it is a discerner of the thoughts that is, the deliberations, what's going on in our minds before we put action to them. The word of God will tell you, the preacher, the Bible study, the word will tell you, you shouldn't be thinking that. Long before the thought becomes an action, the word addresses the thought. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent, that is, the purposes of the heart, of our innermost being. God knows every one of us. We know about each other. What we want people to know. For the most part. Amen. Well, my wife knows everything about me. And 
a husband knows everything about me. No, she doesn't. It's not capable. It's not possible for a human being to know everything about you. Praise the Lord. You can't read your mind. Although there are people who think they can, but you, you, you can't. You, you, you don't have that ability. Parents don't know everything about, that there is to know about their children. I know my child. My child wouldn't do that. Uh, in, in, in cases, that, at times, that's true, but you don't know them but so much. All of us have dealt with disappointing things that we didn't think that the child would do. And all of us, as children, when we were children, did things that we kept from our parents. That to this day, you sitting there gray-headed. Mama still don't know. And you're not going to tell her. And some things you have, you're just going to take to your grave. But God knows. And the word of God, the word of God knows. The word, of the, the word will find you. you. You can try to hide all you want, but the word finds us. And that's one of the reasons why some people who don't want to get right have problems with preachers who preach the truth. See, preachers preaching is hard out. And you're sitting there rolling your eyes, and you think, and won't get with the, with the word, and you, or oh, you think somebody told on you. And the man has no clue. It's just that the word of God. Is, is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Isn't that something? The word of God is quick and it's powerful. That is, it's alive, it's dynamic, it's active. Praise the Lord. It's not static, but it is alive. And it goes deep to the dividing of the soul and spirit. Amen. The, the flesh and our spirit and the joints and the marrow. Isn't that something? The Apostle Paul said this about the word of God. Uh, and this is why sometimes we resist preaching Romans 3 uh, and verse 19. The B clause says that every mouth may be stopped. And all the world become guilty before God. The truth is we're all guilty. We all need forgiveness. We all need, needed salvation. And Jesus came and died for us all. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 10, As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. He's quoting from Psalms now. There they are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. Speaking of man, whether Jew or Gentile, there is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre, and their tongues, look at this, with their tongue they have used deceit. You know, sometimes people say, well, so-and-so, they wouldn't lie. They are lie. They are lie. People lie. Amen. There are two sides to every story. Praise the Lord. Human. The human condition is something. That's why we need the Lord. Humans can be noble and wicked all at the same time. Godly and 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 and, uh, and oh my uh, anointed and full of lust and deceit. All at the same time. We need the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can't get an amen in here. Say, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And their feet are swift to shed, to shed, uh, shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace, mankind without God, they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's the problem. And he's quoting here, he's quoted Psalms, uh, Proverbs 1, Psalms 14, uh, uh, Psalms chapter 36. He's going down the list. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and that the whole world may become guilty before God. 
The word of the Lord convicts us all. The word of the Lord shows us our error. Our text today took place some 220 years before uh, the prophet Zechariah said, Return unto me, and I will return unto you. Return to God. Some 240 years before Zechariah uttered these words, praise the Lord, we find the prophet Isaiah preaching to Judah 154 years before the fall of Jerusalem, before they went into 70 years of bondage, before the 16 years of stoppage of uh, rebuilding the kingdom, before Haggai and, and, and Zechariah preached to the people, we find Isaiah saying to the people, challenging them, and saying it this way in verse 16, Isaiah said, wash you. Wash yourselves. Make you clean. Verse 17, learn to do well. Verse 18, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. We find the word of the Lord being preached to the people, telling the people to return to God. He even asked a question in chapter 1. He asked sinful Judah, how did we get here? In verse 21 of chapter 1, he says, how is the faithful city become a hollow? It was full of justice. Righteousness lived in it. But now murderers. He asked, how did we get like this? We can ask the questions of cities today. We can ask this question of neighborhoods, of certain people, certain businesses. What happened to you? You've driven through neighborhoods and you see the relics of when that was a nice neighborhood. There are still some signs of when the neighbors kept their yards cut, had pride in keeping their homes right, had pride in keeping their streets clean. But now it's a ghetto. What happened? Oh my, you've known of preachers who at in times past preached the truth with power and authority. And now they barely preach the word of God at all. You have to ask yourself, what happened? How did we get here? I still want to know how did the, the, the black community, uh, I say us because I preach mainly to us, how did we go from and I, I love watching the footage of black people in the in the 40s and in the, uh, in the in the 30s and the 50s and the 60s even, and and look at how we carried ourselves then. How did we go from that to this? What what happened? I'm telling you, I guarantee you, Booker T. Washington would have never thought that we would end up. Praise the Lord with um, our pants hanging off uh, our bodies in public. I guarantee, I guarantee, praise the Lord, uh, 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 Sojourner Truth and uh, as uh, uh, Tudman and all of them, as they worked so hard uh, with the Underground Railroad and Truth trying to get people to, to freedom, the, the goal wasn't to get free so you could still look like a slave. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you. I guarantee you that Dr. King had no idea that what we would do unassisted, what we would do of our own with his dream is become what many of us have become today. God knows he didn't think that our boys would cover their bodies with tattoos, put earrings in their ears, switch like sisters and punks. Our girls get all butch. And it become unpopular to be educated, articulate, and strong. Survey was done in, uh, I think, 1964. 64, I think it was. 1964. And in 1964, of the black people who were surveyed, 84%, 80 plus percent 
of the African Americans surveyed in 64 said in 64. Did I say 64? In 64. In 64, where we didn't have the freedoms that we have now. Where we didn't have the access that we have now. When we couldn't, can't, couldn't enjoy like we can enjoy now. They said then that America was worth fighting for. I guarantee you if James Brown made living in America today, I think he did it, it was a 2006 or something like that. The same, same song, Living in America Today, we would be afraid to play the song. Because today we can't celebrate super highways from coast to coast. Easy to get anywhere on a transcontinental overload. Oh no, because, bless you, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not considered to be black now. To love our country. When, when God, the, the remedy that God gave Israel, when they were in Babylonia, he said, be good citizens and pray for the peace of that nation. Even though you were carried away captive. He said, build houses, work, build houses, and, and get married. Get married. Today, as I stand before you, 50% of African Americans of the marrying age in this country have never been married. With all of the benefits that come from being married, most of our people I haven't been married. Amen. During slavery, during slavery, I'm going to preach in just a moment. During slavery. Did I say during slavery? During slavery. African Americans were more likely to have both parents in the home during slavery than today. Before we got all of this government help. Before we fell in love with the left. Before we began to listen to people who convinced us that everybody who doesn't look like us is out to get us. Even, even when we had no rights, we had no citizenship. Even when we were considered less than human, when, when we were chattel, when we were property. Our men stayed home. Yeah. Kept the families together. Today, we'll leave the family at the drop of a hat. I, I'm not happy. She's hard to get along with. It ain't what I thought it was. I like that red dress outside the house. Whatever. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When these things happen, the son doesn't know how to be a man because there's no daddy to teach him. And the daughter don't know how to be treated by men for there's no daughter, there's no daddy to teach her. This is why I am adamantly, another reason I am adamantly opposed to any kind of same-sex union because if you believe in same-sex marriage and same-sex unions, then you believe that moms and dads are optional because if it's two men, then mom's missing. If it's two women, then dad is missing. And there's a whole lot of things that a, man, a dad can be, but I tell you what, a mother is not one of them. A mother is not one of them. Amen. Now maybe in your mind, two daddies would have taken the place of your mama, but they wouldn't have taken the place of mine. Praise the Lord. And there's a lot of things that two women can be, but a man is not one of them. Mm, you can't do it. You can't do it. I don't, you can't do it. I don't care if you go to the lab. You go to the lab. They can cut this, sew up that, move this, shift that. 
Talk this, stick that out, put a needle in you, pray to bend you over, stand you up, whatever. You cannot get away from being who and what God made you. How did we get here? I'm, 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 not, I'm not lost. I'm on my text. I'm, I'm, I'm on it. How? See, how? How? How did we get to the point? How? I want to ask you. How? How, brothers, how did you get to the point where you could watch Empire or Grey's Anatomy or How to Get Away with Murder or how or any of these movies, uh, what was that movie? Scam. Showing men, kissing men and all that. Now, I seen a time when you wouldn't watch anything like that. You wouldn't do it for entertainment purposes. You wouldn't do it because there was just too much man in you to do it. And you, you, and you most certainly, you most certainly wouldn't have taken your woman to see Bohemian Rhapsody. The 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 the, uh, the movie uh, that the, the, that's in the movies now that that's probably gonna get all of the Oscars tonight uh, about about uh, a, a, a white rock group named Queen. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? And uh, all the hom all them homosexuals, praise the Lord, and we can dance to it now. I seen a time where if a man if a man told you he was like that, I don't know why I'm on this, but, but I've seen a time where if he told you, you know what he couldn't do? If you had a choice, you know, you know what he couldn't do? He could not report to you the news. What was that guy named? Max, first black news anchor. Max Robinson. Awesome anchor. Awesome anchor. Awesome anchor. Handsome black man. Nice afro. Nice beard. Always immaculately dressed. Max Robinson died of AIDS. He was a homosexual. Nobody ever knew it till he, till he passed. Nobody ever knew. But one thing Max knew. Max knew that if he told that, they would have to pull him, and he knew that his own community wouldn't watch. Even Luther Vandross wouldn't admit it. He wouldn't admit it because he knew that that's going to kill his record sales. But today, most of us, Don Lemon is our main man. He's become the voice of reason for the black community. A black man who, according to his own testimony, was raped by a relative into being a homosexual. Now he advocates for the very lifestyle that he was raped into and they put him on the news and we're able to sit and hear from someone who advocates for a lifestyle that they were abused into. Now the question is how did we get here? How did so many churches, how did they, how, how could they just, how could so many churches, how many, how could so many, how could so many just, oh, make a church song? I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. 
Think about it every day. Oh, boy, we were into that. Just felt the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I mean, where, where is, this is tough preaching, ain't it? Where is, here's my point, where was our discernment? Where, where is the Holy Ghost? Does the Holy Ghost only speak in tongues? Is that, is that, is that the gist of what he does? Now, what I, I, I read that he gives us discernment. I, I read that he would show you things to come. I, I read that he prepares us. How? Isaiah said, how did the faithful city, Jerusalem, Faithful city number one. How did it become a holler? How? How? Look at the programming. I've, I've been preaching about it, so I'm going to move on. Look at the programming that is aimed at African Americans. It, it doesn't have to be intelligent. It, to me, it's not even funny. Oh, my. Just this, this group of Atlanta, this group of California, this group of New York, and oh, the Paxtons, and, and the rest of them. And, and when you look at what, what we view as programming, oh, Lord, it's, it's raunchy. Uh, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm good, but maybe I'll listen to Programming is just dirty, just foul and vile. And seem like to me, we're the last ones to come, up, come along and then when we get it, we overdo it. We got to be the ones. Got, we got to show the most nudity. Show me a black guy on any movie, television or the theater, show me a black guy, I'll show you one who does all the cussing. Uh, he's, he's got to be the one. Whether it don't whether it is uh, ESPN and the sports shows, praise the Lord, or whatever, we got, why, why do we have to be the ones who are always the, 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 the top of the bottom? Why are we always number one at being last? Why? Preach wouldn't. Why? When you hear this on radio, if you have an answer, send it to me. When you... Those who are Facebook Live, hard to hear, but you know I'm telling you the truth. Why? 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 Oh, you're preaching good. Praise the Lord. When we become comedians, we, why every other word got to be an F-bomb? We're not the only ones, but it seems like to me we just overdo it. Over what, what happened? What happened? And, 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 and our churches, what is, what, what is, what is taking place is, is, uh, is it's not good. So the question, what happened? What happened to our nation? What happened? What happened to our learning institutions? Look at what's happening in our public schools. We're teaching kids how to kneel during the flag, but we're not teaching them how to compete in this world. Our boys and girls are graduating unprepared. And one of the things that they did that we should object to is, uh, and it was purposeful, it was, it was purposefully done to make the American populace, to make the American people dumb. And that is, they drop civics. Most people don't know how a bill becomes a law. They don't know how Congress operates. They don't know how. They don't know how. They don't know how. And, and, and they throw out terms that, you, that they know that you don't know the meaning of. They, 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 they argue and say it's nonsense uh, to have a wall because all of the drugs are coming into the country at ports of entry, uh, not out there in the desert. And so that what we need to do is, is, is watch the ports of entry. But they know that most people don't know what ports of entry mean. The port of entry is, like, is the door. It's the main way in. It's the gateway into the country. So if they're catching the stuff at the ports of entry, how do we know? More comes in 
at the port of entry if there's nobody out there in the desert to even see. If there's nothing, how do you know more are coming in? The answer is you don't. See, these are nonsensical arguments. And I don't tell you things to change your mind. I just tell you things to make you, make you think. Because what, what they try to do is take advantage. They depend on your not knowing, not understanding certain things. How did we get here? The first thing that happened is that we turned away from the Lord. And our worship became meaningless. Let me, let me speed up here. Amen. God used Isaiah to lead both the rulers of the people, of their rulers and the people, of their corrupted nation. He led both to know that he would not tolerate the mixed alloy of the temple prayers and idol worship that they were offering him. One of the things that happened is they became tolerant and inclusive. And they began to mix religion. Evidently, they wanted the both. They wanted both spiritual worlds. Sacrificing to the popular idols of the day and offering prayers to God as a holdover from the past. They wanted to get with what was popular. Be careful. The Bible says be not transformed. Be not conformed, rather, to this world. That is, don't be conformed. Look at this. Look at this now. To this age. That is, to whatever is popular in the world at the time. Now, I want to ask you, how much influence does the world have on us? Word conform means to be molded and shaped. So, so, so some of us got to keep up with all of the styles. We want to be in style. Whatever is popular, whether it's godly or not, whatever, we want to be in style. What well, the Bible says, be not con conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Be changed from the world by the renewing of your mind, by uh, your mind being renovated. See, the word of God renovates the mind. You renovate a house, you take all the stuff out of it. Tear down the walls. Take out that sheet rock. Get that floor up. You, you see these uh, housing shows and how they go in and when they finish renovating, it's like a brand new house. When the word of God gets through with you, you're a brand new you. Amen. You look the same, same out of shell, same height, same weight, same haircut, but something is different. Why? Because the word of the Lord has, has taken root on the inside. And it has our young men not wanting to be Jay-Z. Let me tell you something. We, we, when, the, when the word of God gets through with our ladies, they, they won't want to be Beyonce. They won't want to be the world. They will want to be who and what the Lord would have them to be. Yes, they were trying to, uh, they were trying to uh, participate in the popular idolatry, but as a, I like this, as a holdover. As a holdover. Praise the Lord. We're going to make sure... As a holdover, we uh, hold over from the past, uh, we at least remember the Lord, like we do for Christmas. Every, Santa, 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 and then every now and again, oh yeah, but the true meaning is about Jesus. It's a holdover. The God of the Bible will not be a holdover. God of the Bible has to be first. Isaiah was a prophet during the time when the original nation of Israel had been divided into two kingdoms, the northern and the southern kingdom. Amen. And they were, they both sinned greatly against God. And the southern kingdom was headed in the same direction as the northern kingdom, perverting justice, oppressing the poor, turning from God to idols, and looking for military aid 
from pagan nations rather than trusting the Lord. Isaiah came primarily as a prophet to Judah, but his message was also to the northern kingdom. Sometimes in the book of Isaiah, Israel refers to both kingdoms. Isaiah lived to see the destruction and the captivity of the northern kingdom in 722 B.C. This was when the Assyrians conquered the northern kingdom. In other words, they call the Mosaic traditions during that time, they call the traditional worship, they call that stuff old school. Sounds familiar? They call our style of church today old school. The new style is for the preacher to stand before you in a pullover t-shirt. In jeans, mother, praise the Lord. The choirs are gone. Joy is gone. Amen. The Holy Ghost, gone. Hey, praise the Lord. And uh, now we look more like a, a pep rally. We look more like an a Amazon meeting uh, or an Apple meeting when these, uh, these uh, uh, chief executives, when the CEOs call the people together and many churches now are ashamed to even look or sound like a church. They called it old school and they got in trouble with God. Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 2 and 3, he says, Hear, O nations, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. Uh, the Lord hath spoken and here's what God says, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. I brought you up, Israel. I made you. I fed you. I made you a people, and you have rebelled against me. Look at how quickly it is, how easy it is now for us to turn on Christianity. The five percenters, this group come out, that, that group come out. The woke movement, anything that comes out, and we just shift on a dime. God says, I've been too good for you. I've been too good for you. Too good to you for that. I've been, I've been too good. I've been too good. I nourished you. I brought you up when you were nothing, and you have rebelled against me. So you know what the, know what the prophet does? He goes to the extreme. He uses the two dumbest animals there are. He says the, ox, the ox, the ox is strong, but he's not known for being smart. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass, the mule, knoweth his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, and my people doth not consider. My people are dumber than the ox and dumber than the ass. The ass knows where his master's crib is. And the ox knows his owner. Look at us. And in many cases, we, are, we, are, uh, uh, we don't have the intelligence of these animals. And Isaiah rebuked the nation. And, uh, and the prophet goes on to describe the social consequences of their sin. Verse 4, he says, Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, that is, uh, of great guilt, a seed of evildoers, Look at this here, a brood of evildoers, children that are corruptors. Look at this thing. They, they, the children are given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord, and they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. They have turned their back on the Most High. Look at, how, look at how society was. And he says in verse 5, why should you be stricken anymore? Why continue to get beaten? Ye will revolt more and more. And then he says this about them. He began to describe their uh, psychological, mental, moral, and physical condition. He said the whole head is sick. And the whole heart faint. The head is sick. The heart is sick. He's describing sick folk, crazy people. Head is sick. Heart is sick. Body is sick. A rebel against God is mentally sick. Sick in the head. Emotionally sick in the heart. And physically sick in the body. 
Look at this. He says, from the, from the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness. That is, the whole body is sick. He's using the analogy here of a human being. He says, it is sick, there's no soundness in it, but wounds, bruises, petrifying sores, sores that stink, sores that won't heal. They have been, they have not been closed, closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with oil. You have not even accepted any treatment because you turned your back on me. And he said to them, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, uh, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate. Uh, as it is as desolate, it's desolate as overthrown by strangers. Their, their willingness or lack of willingness to hear God cost them dearly. In our text, the prophet intentionally insults Israel by comparing them to the worst of the Gentile cities and to the worst of the Gentile sins. In our text we find the man of God saying this. He says, hear ye the words of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom, and give ear to the law of God, you people of Gomorrah. Now, by now, Sodom and Gomorrah had been destroyed ever since Genesis chapter 19. And the prophet insults the people of Israel by calling them Sodomites and by calling them members of Gomorrah. I know today that is considered a compliment. Say it loud, we're homosexual and proud, but the Bible is still right. And he, he insulted them. And the, when they heard him, called them sodomites. Uh, they, were, they knew that they were in trouble with God. Right. Oh, you don't hear me. And he says to them, what is the purpose of the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Here he is not questioning the system of their sacrifices. He, 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 he initiated. It was God who gave them the system. But he's questioning their sincerity. He says, why are you sacrificing, saith the Lord. He says, I'm full of burnt offerings. I'm full of rams and of the fat of beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks and of lambs or of he goats. He says, what is the purpose? I want to ask you today, what did you come to church for? Are you here just because you know I want you to come? Are you here because you're trying to find a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Are you here, praise the Lord, because uh, you, you to silence your husband or to silence your wife? Are you, are you at church because you promised someone that you would come? Or, or, or did you come because you want to grow in the Lord? What is the purpose? What is the purpose? The purpose of your coming dictates what you get. If you ever come looking for anything from the Lord, you'll get nothing from the Lord. If you're not coming looking to grow, you won't grow. If you're not coming looking for the word to find you, you won't get found in the word. What is the purpose? Why are you here today simply because it's the thing to do? Why are you watching today on, on Facebook Live? Why are you being a part of the stream? Is it because you want to get better? Or, 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 or are you fighting and resisting the word of the Lord? The Lord says, what is the purpose of all of this? Praise the Lord. You come and you have your services. You go through the motion. You wear, praise the Lord, the, the garb. But I don't see a change in you. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. They didn't miss a Sunday service. They didn't miss a weeknight service. Praise the Lord. They didn't miss a workers meeting nor a convocation. But they were still unfaithful to God. They didn't allow the word of the Lord to seep down into their everyday lives. Oh, I'm not getting any amens today. Ah, uh, the word of the Lord is supposed to change you. The word of the Lord is supposed to change you. You've been going, you've been coming to church, and you've been listening for 20 years that you, you shouldn't smoke, and you're still smoking. What you come for? 
20 years you've heard that fornication is wrong and you're still doing it. What are you, what are you, what are you coming for? You've heard over and over and over, come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. But you still won't change. The Lord says, what is the purpose of this? And the question was not, he didn't expect the answer to be, well, I just want to attend church anymore. No, the answer is, get right. The answer is, make full use of your time. Praise the Lord. Uh, grown people, grown people, why are we here? Uh, are we under the impression that because we're grown, we can do anything we want? That the rules don't apply? Oh my, because we're an adult, we can live any kind of way we want to? Well, I want you to know everybody I'm reading about in here were grown. And they got in trouble with God. You can be as grown as all get out. But you're not above the law of God. When the rain falls, everybody gets wet. When the snow falls, everybody gets snowed on. Praise the Lord. Nobody is above the, the domain of the Lord. The point is that they did not allow their observances, their new moons, their Sabbath, their outward expressions of holiness. They didn't allow it to take place on the inside. So God says, what is the purpose of your coming? And then he says, when you come, verse 12, to appear before me, who have required this at your hand? Well, Lord, you. You were the one that put the, the, uh, the, the, the ordinances and the services in place. But he says, when he asks, who hath required this? The point is, who asked you to do it and just go through the motions? Who gave you permission to make this stuff meaningless? He says, no, if you're going to do it for me, it's got to mean something. Who gave you permission to tread my courts, that is to desecrate my courts, the outer court, the inner court, the court of the Gentile, the court of women, the court that was in the, in the temple. They had brought desecrations into the house of God. Who gave you permission to do it? And then he says, bring no more vain oblations. An oblation is a gift. It's a peace offering. The oblation is a particular kind of offering that is offered to bring peace between God and the offerer. And here we find the Lord calling the oblation vain. Why? Because the people was not changing. They weren't trying to change. They felt that they could stay the same and everything would be all right. You see it from the national on down. Some people are in powerful positions, but they're wicked themselves. Some people have powerful titles, but they're wicked themselves. But the Lord is calling us to change. No matter what the title is, you got to get right with God. Come on, somebody. You know I'm telling the truth. You got to get right. You got to let this thing, let this thing work on you. It's easy for us to shovel the word off to our neighbor. It's easy for us to say, I wish so and so were at service today. They should have heard that word. But you know what? I'm, I, want the word to, I want the word to work on me. I want God to work on Patrick Wooden because I don't want that. I don't want to preach to others. And then after I preach to others, I myself be a castaway. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Seems like to me the Lord is calling for us, calling us to get closer to him. Amen. He, he rejected their whole system. He said your new moons, that is your yearly uh, 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 assemblies and your Sabbath, your weekly assemblies. He says I can't even attend them anymore because you, you come together and you sing my songs. You come together and you sing my praises but there is jealousy, envy, strife, wickedness and evil in your heart. The Lord says I'm not going to service because when you come I can't sit with you because you don't want to get right as never before every one of us need to take inventory and say Lord I want this thing to mean something especially if we're going to do it praise the Lord every Sunday if we're going to be here on Sunday nights if we're going to be here on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights and, and attend district meetings and workers meetings and convocations and, and if you're going to bring your tithe and your offerings and, and if you're going to sit through a sermon and have to hear somebody preach like me who don't know how to preach five minutes take up all your time then you may as well let it work on you 
good God Almighty because you see I'm determined hallelujah to be all that the Lord would have me to be and I'm determined praise God to let the word of God begin to work on the work on me from the inside out and I heard the Lord say when you stand up to spread your hands to, that is to spread your hands to pray God said I'm gonna hide my eyes when you stand to pray to get my attention the Lord says I'm gonna look the other way there you go trying to get my attention and the Lord says I refuse to look because you're trying to get my attention and you're trying to get me to answer your prayers but you don't want to obey me the Bible says and now we know that God heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will him he heareth I don't understand why when we preach messages like this it seemed like to me there's a weight. But oh God, maybe it's conviction. Maybe it's people saying to themselves, I'm gonna get a little closer because I don't want the Lord to turn his back on me. I don't wanna show up at upper room and Jesus not show up because if Jesus don't show up, nobody will get healed. If Jesus don't show up, no one will get blessed if Jesus don't show up nobody will get delivered when Jesus fails to show up everybody leaves the way they came if there's no Jesus there's no power if there's no Jesus there's no salvation no Jesus no joy no Jesus no happiness no Jesus, no love. Oh, oh Jesus, have your way in this place. Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, oh, Lord, move on me right now, right now, right now, right now. Give him glory if you will. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't want to go to a church where Jesus is not present. I don't want to go to a service. You can have 10,000 people there, but if there's no anointing, if there's no power, there's no lives being changed, no gospel being preached, then it's a waste of time. We've got to have the power of the Lord. That's why I tell everybody, when they join the church, you are welcome to join this church. But Jesus is beyond being welcome. He's necessary. If Jesus don't show up, good God Almighty, nothing will show up. But somebody is going to leave here today because the presence of the Lord is in this place. I feel him moving on the inside. I feel him. Oh, the other day, I walked in the sanctuary, sat down on the front row by myself, and I felt the glory, and I felt the power of the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, Lord. Somebody praise him for his presence. Somebody praise him for his glory. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Oh, hug somebody and tell them I want it to mean something. I want it to mean something. I want my preaching to mean something. I want my worship to mean something. I want my gathering to mean something. First of all, I want to move God. I want to move you, Jesus, with my praise. When I spread my hand, I want you to hear my prayer. When I give my offerings, I want you to bless me for it. When I preach, 
I want your anointing. Ah! Ah! Lord, I want it to mean something. Give the Lord a praise that you want to mean something. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Uh, oh Lord, oh Lord. He said, I can't deal with your service. He said, but here's what I want you to do. Wash you and make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing other words get right with God and then he said learn to do well we need to learn how to get along with each other we need to learn how to love one another we need to learn how to love the Lord we need to learn how to live right we need to learn how to live clean we need to learn how to be a success we need to learn how to keep our joy learn to do well seek justice relieve the oppressed help somebody who is down and out judge the fatherless plead for the widows and i heard the lord say ah, come let us reason together come on with all that you've done, it's not too late. I'll sit down and I'll talk with you. Yeah, yes. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be like scarlet, be as scarlet. Though your sins are dyed, though your sins are written on you, with an indelible ink. I'm able to wash it away. It doesn't matter what the grip is. I know the devil got you thinking that he's holding you with a tight grip, but God is able to set you free. He's able to bring you out. Is there anybody here? The devil had you. Didn't the Lord deliver your soul? Didn't the Lord bring you out? Yeah! Yeah! The devil thought he had me, but I got away! I got away! A few of you, give him my I got away praise. Glory to God. I got away. clapping while you're shouting while you're praising the Lord say to the Lord I want this to mean something say to God I want it to mean something I want my praise I want my worship I want my dance I want my shout Lord oh, oh Lord I want it to mean something hey now Pray, 
praise him. Go on and praise him. Praise him like you mean it. Praise him like you mean something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hi! It means something. It means something. Hey, now, the Lord accepts my way. The Lord accepts my praise. It means something. Lift your hands and say yes. Lift your hands and say yes. Ah, yeah. 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 Ah, yeah. God Almighty, good God Almighty, ain't the Lord good, ain't the Lord good, ain't the Lord good, woo! Lift your hands if it means something to you. I'm, I'm going to be willing and obedient. Because you know what I want? I want what it has for me. He says if, I, if I'm willing and obedient, I can eat the good of the land. He cut out a boss. Give him a good of the land worship. Woo! A good of the land. I want the good of the land. I want the good of the land. I want the land to yield. I want the land to yield. Oh, my shekara bossa. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. See, this is not a bad news, some it's a good news. Yeah, if you respond to him, it's a good news. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured with the soil, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't want my worship. I don't want my church going. I don't want my work for you to be in vain. I don't want it to be meaningless. I want it to mean something, Lord. I want it to mean something, Lord, first and foremost to you. And then I want it to mean something to the people around me. I want them to see that I'm real. And for real. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty, I want, I want it to mean something. Come to the altar if you want it to mean something. One day, one day, I was trying to pray. I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with Jesus. One day, oh, one day, one day, I 
was trying to pray. I fell in love with Jesus. Fell in love with Jesus. Fell in love with Jesus. One day, one day, one day, I was walking along, weary, wounded, and sad. Found in him a resting place. He made me glad. I fell in love with Jesus one day, one day, one day he saved my soul. I didn't have no doubt, just let Jesus take control, he will bring you out. Fell in love with Jesus one day, how many fell in love with him? Worship him, we're getting ready to pray. Huh. Worship him. Mm. I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love. Mighty good friend. I'm happy. Oh, I fell in love. I fell in love. I couldn't keep it to myself. I had to tell someone else. Feet got light when I fell in love. Oh, I fell in love. Oh, I got over me when I fell in love. God Almighty. One day when I was trying to pray, I fell in love with Jesus. I fell, I fell, I fell, I fell, I fell, I fell, I fell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fell in love with Jesus one day. Da 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 da. I fell in love with Jesus one day. Do 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 Sunday. I fell in love with Jesus one day. Oh Lord, that's what happened to me. I fell in love with Jesus one day. Good for the last time. Fell in love with Jesus. That's why, that's why I want, I want my worship to matter. So I want my church attendance and my offering that I'm going to give in a few minutes and my tithe. And when I come back tonight and go to the uh, district, second leg of the district tour, I don't want, I want it to matter. I want God to take notice. Uh, when I sit, sit through the service, I don't want it to be just a waste of time. And, and, and I'm constantly checking my watch and wondering, you know, I want it to matter. I want it to matter. Some of us all throughout service, that's all we're doing. You know when you do that in the Lord's heart, do you know the Lord does that to you? So you check it, you checking your time, he's checking your time too. Keep on. He has, he has the ability to cut yours. You can't cut his. That's right. That's right. That's good. Woo! That's strong. My God. You do that, the Lord does the same. Isn't that something to think about? Lift your hands to him. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Father. Lord, I, 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 I did not calculate the days, Lord. I, I didn't think to do it. Probably would have been clever and good for the sermon, had I. But if I go back to the number of years that I've been saved, I can just about estimate the, the amount of weeks that I've been in church, um, how many convocations and workers' meetings and you know, that I've attended and I guess we could estimate it down to how many hours and seconds. It would sound good. We're good in the sermon. What particular percentage of my life has been in worship, in the service of the Lord? Oh God, 
I don't want it to all have been for naught. Lord Jesus. I don't want today, Lord, as I spread my hands to pray. I'm praying toward you. I don't want you to turn away from me. The analogy that God showed me there is a girl trying to, a guy trying to get a girl's attention or the girl trying to get his and she, he's basically saying to her, see me, see me, look at me. And everything he tries, she intentionally looks the other way. Ignores. I don't want to be ignored by the God of the Bible. Lord, don't ignore me, Lord. I want you to hear me, Lord. Oh, God, don't ignore me. I want you to hear me, Lord. I want, I want you to hear me, Lord. I want you to hear me when I pray. Lord, when I bring my offering today, I'm bringing my oblation. I, I, I want you to be pleased with my gift. I, I, want it, I want it to go toward peace between you and me. I know Christ paid it all, but you still call for practical holiness. You still, We still got to give an account of the deeds done. Lord, we come before you right now. We come before you, Lord. We come before you. We were saying that we want it to count. We want it to count. We want the worship service to have an effect on us. Lord, I pray that my preaching today, oh God, I hope that somebody did something other than enjoyed it. I pray that, Lord, somebody's heart was pricked. That somebody said, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get closer in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God. I pray, oh God, even though there's a degree of entertainment in it, Lord, that we weren't just mere entertaining. Lord, I pray that we were not before the people as a lovely song, as Ezekiel says, as one who plays skillfully on an instrument. But Lord, may the word of the Lord, may the word of the Lord, may the word of the Lord sink deep into our hearts. Oh God, let it sink into mind, Lord. Hey, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I don't want you to look at me and call me a sodomite. I don't want you to look at me and call me uh, a member of a Gamara, a Gamararian, or however that would be pronounced. I don't know, Lord. Uh, but I want you to call me servant. I want you to call me son. I want you to call me beloved. I want you to call me yours. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What was, it? What was the point of calling him Sodom? And Gomorrah. Believe it or not, the point wasn't that he was calling them all homosexuals. That wasn't his point. The point was that they, he was rebuking them for like the men of Sodom, they were unwilling to repent. Un, unwilling to repent. Unwilling to change. Unwilling. What, regardless of what the sin was, whether it was homosexuality, whatever, they unwilling to move. There are those of us who say, well, well it's just like, I'm just like this. It's just the way I am. It's just the way. No, no, you can't be that way. You can't be that way. If, if you're like that, you got to let the Lord break the chains or the, the singing, the worshiping. Everything is in vain. The preaching. My God. And since we, since we decided we're going to be a church full of workers and a church full of worshipers anyway, it ought to count. Yeah. Got to count. Father, right now. Father, right now. Oh, look at your hands being, clapping your hands. Ask God to honor your hand claps. Lord, honor, clap my hands. Honor when I praise you. Honor me, Lord. Honor. Those who are watching on live stream today, you ought to make it count. You ought to make it count. Oh, make it count. The Lord loves you. Hallelujah. How do you make it count? You serve the Lord with a sincere heart. You serve the Lord only. The Lord says, come, let us reason together. You give your sin over to him. Let him take them. I don't care how deep. I don't, it doesn't matter how deep you may be. It doesn't matter what grip Satan have had on you. The Lord says, I'll break it now. I'll break it now. Give it up to me. Offer it up to me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Would you just for the next minute just worship him? Hallelujah, Jesus. If your worship means something to him, if it means something to you, it'll mean something to him. And if it means something to him, then it means something to you. Lord Jesus, oh God, I worship you. Oh God, I worship you. 
Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. I don't want my praying and my living to be in vain. We're getting ready to give in just a moment. I want the Lord to take notice of it. Hey, Shekababa. We've come to church today and sat through the service and participated in the service. Lord, I want you to take notice of it. Where is Sister Say Say? When God, where is she? She's saying she's so anointed. She says she's at the back. When the Lord gave me that song, tell God yes, being Brother Rafer was talking. Written for your voice. Hallelujah. He knows what's best for you. Wasn't that powerful? Praise the Lord. And everything in the service flows. Tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Come reason together. Tell him yes. That's, that's what you tell the Lord when you're talking to him. It's just yes. Yes. You, you don't be trying to rebut nothing. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When he rebuke you, yes, Lord. When he set you straight, yes, Lord. I'm going to bless you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise him all over the church.